we will be using chalk pastels to make a seascape for some fish that we'll be printing. The seascape with the chalk pastels is going to be filled with different types of seaweed or coral, and you'll be looking at some inspirational pictures to get some ideas. When we use chalk pastels, we don't want to press super hard or fill in a whole space with a solid color. That creates a lot of extra dust that we then have to get rid of without smudging it on our paper. So instead, you'll see that I drew um, a few lines, I colored in some spaces, but now I'm going to use a tissue, wrap it around my finger so I have control, and spread that chalk around in the space that I put it. Because I didn't have extra chalk, now all that chalk is getting rubbed in and it's going to stay on the paper and not flake off or go somewhere I don't want it. So I'm trying to be careful to keep that shape that I created and blending those chalk pastels together to get that smooth appearance. Now, I don't want everything to be super smooth, so I can always go back and add a few light, careful lines that show some more detail. So because it was all one shape, now I want to go back and add some extra lines to really show where the leaves and the details of that seaweed are. I'm going to keep looking for some other ideas and some other big pieces I can add to my picture. So there are some coral that have these circular tube shapes. Those ones are pretty interesting to me. Notice I'm using lots of little loose lines. I'm not being super exact, not trying to make it perfect, but I'm thinking about what are the main forms or ideas that I want to include. I'm going to color in just a little bit of each one, not super hard and not super neat. And then I also want to add some highlights and shadows. So I'm going to want to use white pastels and black or brown pastels to really add some depth or some 3D-ness. Let's see, maybe on the sides I want to have a highlight, so I'm going with my white pastel. Then when I smooth it all together, I can really see how it becomes one shape or one form. Once again, I'm keeping my tissue wrapped around my finger to keep really neat and stay in control. And then I can go and I can circle the shapes that are circles, I can go straight on the straight lines, and then I can go back and once again add those details. So I want to leave some lines that are not blended like the rest. Then I can add shadows or some darker areas. It's really helping it to look a little bit more 3D. Let's speed up the rest of this. I'm going to keep drawing those shapes that I saw on my example, and maybe even some I've got inside my head. I can mix the colors together with chalk pastels by blending maybe some analogous colors like this green, yellow, green, and yellow. Then I can use my tissue to blend them together and make them softer. Maybe in my uh, ocean, there's even some bubbles in the sky, or in the water, I suppose, not the sky. So I'm using some blues, and I'm leaving some areas open for my little white highlights, and then they're bubbling up from some other sea creatures that are living down there. We will be putting our fish, we'll be cutting them out and gluing them on top of the seascape. So while we want there to be room for our fish, it's okay if they're going to cover up or overlap some of the rest of our picture. Don't forget about the simple things like stones or grass or sand at the bottom of our sea. So here I'm using some neutral colors like whites, grays, and browns, and I made those stones. Then the sand, I want to have a variety of colors in my sand. So I'm using yellows, peaches, oranges, and I'm going to blend those together to get a variety of colors, and it really helps that sand to look more interesting. Maybe I want some more seaweed in the background. Maybe it's kind of floating off or it got detached. It can be behind my other pieces of seaweed. Here I'm going back to add some more highlights. The highlights really help your artwork pop when you go back and add little white areas. Smoothing out just some of it, but not everything. Keep adding more and more layers and things with different colors to really show what all is going on in your seascape. We're going to make fish prints called gyotaku. On each paper that we make our fish print, make sure your name makes it on the back first, and your class code. Then, at the printing station, you'll find a brush and a little tray with some black tempera cake paint inside. The tempera cakes are the hard circle, and then the water is what wakes up the paint. Now we're going to be painting those uh, paint colors on top of the fish shape that we're using to make our print. The fishes are just made out of gelatin or kind of a rubbery texture and they have the scales and the edges and everything on the fish and that's what's really important to get in our finalized print. Now to really make the paint stay on the fish we actually don't want a ton of water. So you want to be rubbing your brush against the actual 
cake or that hard circle and not just swishing it around in the water that might be near the cake. There will be little bottles of water to spritz on top of your paint to make sure it's woken up, but you don't want puddles of water. So make sure it's just wet enough to start working when you put your brush in it. You wanna focus on getting a good amount of paint across the entire surface of the fish. So constantly going back with your brush to pick up more paint and then smoothing it across the whole fish, all the scales, all the fins, to make sure every little detail has the right amount of paint. Then set down your brush, pick up your paper that has your name on it, and make sure you press down the side that does not have your name. When we press this paper, you really have to form it around the fish. So I'm squeezing and I'm moving it around, touching every edge of the fish. The paper's gonna wrinkle and move a little bit. It's a thin paper to really make sure it can grab every detail. I don't want the paper to move once I put it down. So I'm really holding it in place with one hand and pushing it with the other. Voila! I have a fish print. We'll be making more than one print, so every time you do it, you'll be learning something new and getting to edit and change as you paint on your color and then press your paper to get the right print. We have our fish prints and our background. You can decide if you want to use all three or maybe only even two of your fish prints. Some of them might not have worked out as well as others. Whichever ones you decide to use, it's time to cut out those shapes. When we're cutting out the shapes of our fish prints, we don't want to try to be super exact with all the little fuzzy edges. Instead, it'll look nice to keep a little bit of a bubble of white paper along the edge of the fish. So as I'm cutting, I'm leaving a tiny bit of room between where I'm cutting and where the ink ends of my fish print. That small little white bubble will give us some wiggle room to cut around those shapes and not have to be super exact with each little pointy fin or scale. Make sure to keep turning your scissors as you are cutting out your fish to keep some nice smooth edges. When we glue our fish to the background, we'll be able to see the edge that you cut and we want it to look nice and neat and smooth and not full of lots of little straight cuts. So to do that, you have to turn your scissors while you are cutting to really curve those edges and make a nice, neat cut. You'll notice sometimes I even have to go back to cut out smaller or narrower areas. Moving your scissors in and out of different spaces in different directions can help you get those tiny areas. You don't wanna to have to force your wrist or turn it an uncomfortable way. It's hard to be neat when your wrist is backwards. I'm gonna do the same thing with my second fish. Now that we have the fish cut out, it's time to decide where they're going to go. Try moving them around in different spots to see where they would look best and overlapping different parts of your drawing. One neat trick you can do is actually to cut one fish in half. Watch how I can turn one fish into two fish. Part of the fish is now coming in from off the paper and part of my fish is leaving. Then I've still got my one whole fish in the middle. So this way, if you didn't choose to use all three of your fish, you can still have a nice, busy coral reef. Here I just changed the angle so the fish are not quite both diving down low, but one's just going straight to the right. Now that I know where I want my fish to go, I need to get my glue stick ready to trace the back of my fish shapes. Turn over your fish and trace along the outside edge of your fish shape, and then add some more to the middle. Make sure to do this fairly quickly so the glue doesn't dry before you turn it over, press it on your paper, hold and count to 10. Make sure to rub it really well on each area too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Hopefully that's pretty stuck now. Then I can do the same thing with my glue stick to each of my other fish. Make sure your glue cap gets on and snaps tight onto that glue stick. We wanna make sure to take care of our space and supplies. The last step is to use some colored pencils to add some final details to our fish. The paint is already there and shows us the scales, the eyes, the fins, 
but it can be kind of hard to see when it's all one color. So you can start to take some colored pencils and outline and edit to make things easier to see. So I'm gonna look for the eye and outline that circle and try to add a little more color. I could switch up my colors and try to decide where the fin is. Here I've got some gray, although the gray is not standing out very much. Maybe I'm gonna use some bright colors like this yellow. This warm yellow is really standing out against the blue fish. Now I can show where that fin is and where the different edges and lines are. And it helps to add a little bit more interest to the design of my fish. I'm gonna do this detail adding to each of my three fish. Now I've completed my Gyotaku fish print and seascape background.